Good evening to all of you. I am Akhila, one of the volunteers at Dr. Shampur Madhusudana Trust. I would like to welcome all of you to uh, session three of the mental wellness webinar series uh, by Ms. Ishita Sharma, a counseling psychologist. Before um, I introduce Ishita to all of you, I would like to introduce uh, about our trust to you all. Um, Dr. Shampur Madhusudana Trust basically does um, work related to creating awareness about rabies. So the vision of our uh, trust is to create a rabies-free society and to develop sustainable solutions for mental wellness of the whole society, but with special reference to children because we have been working uh, tirelessly with children, uh, mostly from the rural parts of uh, Karnataka who are more prone to rabies. So the mental wellness um, initiative by the trust uh, was conceptualized during the pandemic, especially when the mental wellness of most of the individuals um, was very badly affected. There were job losses and then uh, people had to be there at home 24 bar 7 and there was so much of insecurity, uncertainty. All this um, led to a conceptualization of uh, a mental wellness initiative and thus started our mental wellness webinar series. So here you are um, at the third session of our webinar uh, by Ishita Sharma, who's a counseling psychologist. Um, so this trust is named after Dr. Shampur Madhusudana, who was a neurovirologist. Um, he spent most of his time doing research, um, practice as a uh, neurovirologist, and also taught for a brief period of time. He also has a lot of publications to his credit. Um, so the intradermal vaccination uh, came as an initiative uh, from him as an economical uh, measure in our country. So this is a small introduction for all of you about our trust and what it uh, does. So today we have amongst us Ishita Sharma, who's a counseling psychologist, and the topic she's going to talk about is movement as a health perspective to improving mind-body functioning. Ishita is a counseling psychologist, as I've already told you, with three years of experience in mental health and emotional wellness. She holds a master's degree in counseling psychology from Christ University, Bangalore, and is qualified in CAT level one from ICATA and Healing with Arts. She integrates an eclectic approach into her practice to create the right balance that would suit her clients' mental health needs and areas of concern. Her expertise lies in areas of stress, anxiety, self-identity, self-esteem, relationships, building leadership skills, along with ensuring work-life harmony. She works with her clients to guide them in exploring and empowering themselves to attain their mental health goals. She has worked with adolescents and adults, providing individual counseling, life skill, personalities, sorry, personal safety and mental health, um, mostly mental health awareness workshops. Currently, she's providing counseling sessions for adults over phone conversations and video calls. Uh, Ishita, I deem it my privilege to welcome you to this session on behalf of Dr. Shampur Madhusudana Trust. A hearty welcome to you and over to you. Thank you so much, Akhila. Um, it's, I'm very glad to be part of this and I hope that everybody enjoys this session today. Akhila, thank you so much for a beautiful introduction. Um, I really appreciate that. Okay, so um, I hope everyone is able to see my screen now, yeah? Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, another webinar of uh, mental wellness and this time today I will be talking to you about mental wellness and movement. So before we start, I'd like to thank you all for like joining in today. I know it's been a very difficult time for all of us. We are all are going through so much and 
the world is um, just right now we all are going through so much and it has clearly impacted our mental health so i'm very glad that you all are over here and being part of this webinar so before let we start um, about the webinar let's start off with a little bit of activity right um so whoever um if you want you can like turn on the video otherwise you can just like um, you can just talk imitate what i'm doing over here all right so i want you to guys um, stretch your hands forward over here like this as it's shown in the picture right and now stretch your hands above your head yeah just stretch it amazingly high as high as you can reach now i want you to take the hands and then keep it on your shoulder so your elbow is pointing out this way okay all right so i see that most of you are able to do that so now with your left hand we are now going to do a little bit of memory game so with your left hand i want you to write in the air um about things that you ate for breakfast today for example i had idli so in the air i'm going to write idli and i want you to do the same so we here you write idli like this and i'll give you some time to like write whatever you had for breakfast through your left elbow yeah okay all right now with your right hand and with your right elbow i want you to write something that you had for lunch yeah so i had mixed vegetable for lunch so i'm going to write mixed veg as a short form and you can write whatever you had for lunch and if you cannot remember what you had for lunch if your memory is affected or impacted at the moment you can just write what you wish you had for lunch okay so let's start writing all right have you guys been able to do that perfect all right so if since we are in the middle of week and it has been a amazing week for me but and if you are also on the same page and if you had a very good week i want you to rotate your head from right to left in this way and if you are not having such a great week i want you to rotate your head from left to right like this nice okay It so seems like we all are like warmed up with this little bit of exercise. Now let's move on to today's topic which is about movement. So, what is movement? Movement is about changing your position or your state. And we do this constantly. We move, we talk, we move our hands, we get up, we walk, and we do a lot of things. And every movement counts. Right? and during this pandemic we have been limited from ex going out to going out for work or like you know engaging in activities outside our home which has clearly impacted our mental health because we're not able to expose we're not able to move and people who had uh, a lot of my clients usually say that when uh, whoever had started with this exercise routine or any kind of movement routine in their life and when the pandemic hit they had to like you know come back to their house and do all their movement and exercise from home so it has been a very difficult moment for all of us and this pandemic situation has gotten most of us moving from like you know to the bed and then away from bed to the desktop and to work a bit and then move, move back to bed right so we do not have enough uh, physical activity going on So what do you do in situations where you're not able to move and you're not able to give your body enough movement? Well, I'll be talking about it a little bit later. Okay. Sorry. Um so like we were talking about movement and why is movement so important? We'll get back to that a little bit later. But let's look at is the move talking about movement a new thing? Is talking about physical activity a new thing? no it's not we have been on a move constantly and so has our ancestors our ancestors used to walk kilometers to like search and search of basic needs like you know for food for water for shelter they used to move miles and miles and now today in the world of technology we have restricted our movement in many different ways nowadays we don't get out a lot and we do not have enough movement 
with us. So before we get on to what is movement and um, what should we do about it to like move all around and get enough physical activities with us, let's think about, let's see how our body even moves. The process is very simple. Our brain, which is a magnificent organ, it coordinates with muscles, skeletal, and nervous system and sends signals to them to pick up, to drop, to bend, to walk. So all the movement happens in your body because the brain is directing it to. Yeah? Okay. So what is movement and is it all about exercise? No, it's not. Movement is all about physical activity. Whenever you move, you are producing um, and uh, using a little bit of your energy, right? And that is movement. And that's all you need. Some kind of movement throughout the day, right? You don't need to exercise or go to bodybuilding. All you can do is just make some basic movements and all of these be on constant move. Like I was saying, there's no one movement that you can do. Movement comprises of walking, playing sports, stretching, dancing, doing yoga, bending, and stretching. What I made you do in the starting of the, uh, the starting before we started the webinar was to make you stretch a bit and you know engage in a fun activity, and that itself was a movement. So if you didn't have much movement today throughout the day, you know that you have and moved your arms in a while doing that activity. So let's move on and think and see how, why is movement so important and why we should all keep moving on. Move it and lose it. It's a very common thing and technique that has been told to us so many times. Nowadays, because of technology and other reasons also, our lifestyle has become very sedentary. We don't get enough movement, and we choose to sit. And most of our jobs are more on the laptop or on phone, which makes us not move enough. And movement is very important because when we don't move enough, our muscles lose the strength and they also lose the function. And that causes a lot of illnesses later on. For example, osteoporosis, arthritis. And not only physical, it also impacts our mental wellness. For example, our mental health gets impacted when we don't move enough. There are chances of you all contracting anxiety, depression, and not being able to manage stress if you don't move enough. To explain it further about the importance of movement, let me take you to an, a TED talk by Murad. He will explore about the, pen, the hidden risk of sitting down and what you can do later on to prevent it. Now you're probably sitting down to watch this video and staying seated for a few minutes to be in it is probably okay. But the longer you stay put, the more agitated your body becomes. It sits there counting down the moments until you stand up again and take it for a walk. That may sound ridiculous. Our bodies love to sit, right? Not really. Sure, sitting for brief periods can help us recover from stress or recuperate from exercise. But nowadays, our lifestyles make us sit much more than we move around. And our bodies simply aren't built for such a sedentary existence. In fact, just the opposite is true. The human body is built to move, and you can see evidence of that in the way it's structured. Inside us are over 360 joints and about 700 skeletal muscles that enable easy, fluid motion. The body's unique physical structure gives us the ability to stand up straight against the pull of gravity. Our blood depends on us moving around to be able to circulate properly. Our nerve cells benefit from movement, and our skin is elastic, meaning it molds to our emotions. So if every inch of the body is ready and waiting for you to move, what happens when you just don't? Let's start with the backbone of the problem, literally. 
Our spine is a long structure made of bones and cartilage discs nested between them. The joints, muscles, and ligaments that are attached to the bones hold it all together. A common way of sitting is with a curved back and slumped shoulders, a position that puts uneven pressure on our spine. Over time, this causes wear and tear in your spinal discs, overworks certain ligaments and joints, and puts strain on muscles that stretch to accommodate your back's curved position. This hunched shape also shrinks your chest cavity while you sit, meaning your lungs have less space to expand into when you breathe. That's a problem because it temporarily limits the amount of oxygen that fills your lungs and filters into your blood. Around the skeleton are the muscles, nerves, arteries, and veins that form the body's soft tissue layers. The very act of sitting squashes, pressurizes, and compresses, and these more delicate tissues really fail to run. Have you ever experienced numbness and swelling in your limbs when you sit? The areas that are the most compressed, your nerves, arteries, and veins can become blocked, which limits nerve signaling, causing the numbness and reduces blood flow in your limbs, causing them to swell. Sitting for long periods also temporarily deactivates lipoprotein lipase, a special enzyme in the walls of blood capillaries that breaks down fats in the blood. So when you sit, you're not burning fat nearly as well as when you move around. What effects does all of this stasis have on the brain? Most of the time, you probably sit down to use your brain. But ironically, lengthy periods of sitting actually run counter to this goal. Being stationary reduces blood flow and the amount of oxygen to enter your bloodstream through your lungs. Your brain requires both of those things to remain alert, so your concentration levels will most likely dip as your brain activity slows. Unfortunately, the ill effects of being seated don't only exist in the short term. Recent studies have found that sitting for long periods is linked with some types of cancers and heart disease and can contribute to diabetes, kidney, and liver problems. In fact, researchers have worked out that worldwide inactivity causes about 9% of premature deaths a year. That's over 5 million people. So what seems like such a harmless habit actually has the power to change our health. But luckily, the solutions to this mounting threat are simple and intuitive. When you have no choice but to sit, try switching the slouch for a straighter spine. And when you don't have to be bound to your seat, aim to move around much more, perhaps by setting a reminder to yourself to get up every half hour. But mostly, just appreciate that bodies are built for motion, not for stillness. In fact, since the video is almost over, why not stand up and stretch right now? Treat your body to a walk. It'll thank you later. Hi. So I hope that video was very insightful for you and that you got to learn a lot about how sitting and lifestyle can impact us. Now moving on to our next slide, let's talk a little bit about, oh, I hope you're able to see the screen. So now let's talk about how movement is important both for our body and mind and how we can like, you know, train ourselves to like move a little bit ahead and keep on moving. As you all know from the, learned from the video, that sitting idle and sitting, um, sitting down for long can really impact us. So how is movement helpful for our body? First, cardiovascular health. When we move a lot, it decreases the stress on our heart and it also provides a blood circulation throughout the body. That means when you move, you're providing enough oxygen to all parts of the organ. Joint flexibility. Our tendons and ligaments need a movement so that it functions appropriately. 
Also, when you move, you're providing nourishment to your cartilages. That's why movement is very much helpful for us. Dexterity of muscles. Have you sat for a very long time and then complained about back pain? Yes, that's what happens when you sit for very long. Our muscle starts to constrict and that gives us a lot of pain. One way to improve your uh, dexterity of muscles is that you keep moving around and move, twist, stretch, which also helps in getting your, getting your muscles flexible and you can make more and more movements as you keep moving around. When it comes to our bones, it's very important that we slow the aging of the bone. When we sit around for long, our bone health reduces a lot and it gives chances of osteoporosis. All right, I hope you're able to tell me now. All right, hormones. Hormones is very important for us. Hormones are the reason why we can eat, digest our foods, and also have a very good reproductive system. So how can you help? Um, so what you can do is keep moving around a little bit. And when you keep moving around, all the hormonal activities that your brain has to do will work. Um, I'm sorry, if, am I breathing again, Akila? All right, it's much better. Okay. Um, when we move around, our, the fat and the energy that is stored in our body does not only become uh, get stored as a fat. Our muscle use that energy, which helps us to keep on moving and also not help us not to get a uh, little bit obese. And when we move, our immune system also functions in a healthy manner. When we move a lot, um, our white blood cells, which are very important for us to like uh, fight infections and you know to like um, maintain a good health, gets absorbed. The white blood cells get absorbed as you move around a lot. And as you move, all the waste and toxins that's collected in our body gets completely distributed and gets excreted out. Moving on, we'll now see how movement is so important for us, for our mind. As you know, this topic is about mental wellness. So it's very essential for us to talk about how uh, movement impacts our mind and our mental health. First, movement helps us boost our mood. When you move a lot, endorphins are released from, um, in our body, which helps us to manage stress and pain. When we move a lot, um, that helps, like I said, that when we move, when we move a lot, it helps us to reduce, um, reduce stress and also work upon the pain that we go through. Improve sleep. Um, when you work out a bit, whether it's in form of any physical activity, whether you work out, you move, you walk, you talk, you'll also notice that you get a very deep sleep. And that's what happens when we move out, we move a lot. A body gets a little bit tired and you get into a much more deeper sleep. Anytime when you feel that you're not able to fall asleep, I would help you, it will really help if you like do a little bit of stretching, walk around the house and then go back to the bed instead of just laying there and trying to fall asleep. Movement is also helpful for our concentration. Our prefrontal cortex is responsible for our focus and concentration. When we move around a lot, And neurogenesis happens. Neurogenesis is a process where new neurons and new brain cells are formed. So you, the brain is much more healthy when you start moving around. And that's the reason why your memory gets, starts getting sharper. Self-esteem. When we start moving a lot and start achieving our goals, our physical goals, our mental health goals, you will have a sense of achievement, right? And that's what raises our self-esteem so if you move around it's not only good for your physical health and for your mental health but it's also very good for your self-esteem 
Coming to resilience, resilience is very important with all the stresses that we're going around and in this pandemic, we realize that we're not a lot of us are very resilient to so many changes. Movement is, gives us a very good healthy coping mechanism over compared to drugs and alcohol. And that's why movement is so essential. And movement, such as if you would have known about dance therapy, it helps us to deal with trauma. When you move a lot, um, the trauma that gets collected in our body parts, it, uh, it has a sense of release. You release the tension when you move a lot, and that's what's very helpful to maintain a mental health. So how much movement do we require? Well, as children grow up from the age of one to 80, they require a lot of movement. And that's because uh, as we're growing up and between the ages to one to 18, children are like, you know, they're growing up, their organs are like developing into an adult um, healthy organs, their bone density gets stronger, their muscles get stronger. So children requires a moderate to vigorous intensity of exercises and movement. So whether they do um, yoga, whether they play sports, it's very essential for the cognitive and physical development that children engage in a lot of exercise and physical activity of any sorts. As adults, as we keep moving, uh, as you keep growing older, we tend to lose a little bit of our you know, strength, whether it's muscular strength and whether it's a bone health starts getting deteriorated. And to maintain that, it's very important for adults to have a little bit of um, moderate intensity level of uh, physical activity. Whether you uh, get up while you're sitting for too long or whether you like you know choose to walk around or whether you choose to just stretch or do a little bit of yoga or if you're playing with um a sports or playing any indoor game you really need a little bit of movement so that you have less chance of osteoporosis and any other age related um, illnesses like dementia and alzheimer's now, since we are in a pandemic situation, I know that all our movement has been restricted, like I was earlier talking to you about. So let me cover a little bit about what all movements can you do in the current situation where we are still restricted to our home environment. One of the things that you can do is like take calls when you don't have video calls. You just walk while you're taking a, while you're on a call. You can walk around the space that you are in and that will give you enough movement. Another thing you can do is like when you're on a constant video call and when you have an hours or more meeting, what you can do while you sit down is like you can wriggle your toes and like, you know, rotate your ankles. That way you are having a little bit of movement and your body is on constant motion too, even though you're sitting down. It's very important for all of us to take some time out. And that you can do by just getting up after every 30 minutes or 20 minutes, walk around the house, do a little bit of stretches or whatever you are more comfortable with. If you're more comfortable in just like, you know, just going and working in the kitchen, you can do that. Or whether you have to go to the washing machine, just keep moving, take a break every half an hour. That would be very ideal. We're in a situation where we all have to do our household chores, right? And even though that sounds very boring, it's, it's one form where you can have a lot of movement. Whenever you're engaging in whether dusting or like mopping, you're really engaging those muscles of the legs and hands. And that gives you enough movement that your body really requires. Cooking is also another great way where you can, you know, have enough movements while you are, uh, while you're at home. What you can do, is you know when you need or when you're like even stirring for example you can just keep moving your legs so you can just like walk step at a time or you can just rotate and just walk around the kitchen and space it out so that you your body has enough movement another way that you can keep moving and be in a motion is if you are in a relationship or the couples together can engage in some form of physical activity together. Um, for example, you can dance together, you can mirror each other's physical action and activities. 
This helps to create a good connection and also increases intimacy between couples. If you have kids and pets, it's, movement is pretty essential for, you'll realize how important movement is for both the kid, pet, and for you. This is a perfect time where you can engage with your kids and with your pets, give them your attention and make all of you can move around together. Another great way to have a little bit of movement is through art. You can eat if you enjoy crafting, you can engage in some of the craft work, whether you like uh, knitting, whether you like, like you know, doing some other craft activities, or even if you like painting, any movement matters. And that's why you should constantly keep moving. Now, in the middle of pandemic, I know we all are trapped in our homes and with our family. So this is a good time that the entire family gets along and play certain games. For example, Damsharas and Pictionaries is one such game where you can involve both your younger and your older generation. And together you can come together as a family and engage in some fun movement-based activity. Garden. Gardening is an activity which is very close to me. I have been gardening since I was a child. And Gardening is not only essential um, for like for movement, but it's also a very good grounding activity. Whenever you feel a little bit stressed, you can do a little bit of gardening. And of course, having plants and greenery around obviously moves your, moves your moods. Now, before we move on, since we have been staring at a screen for a very long time, let's do another set of activity. You all are ready for it? So I want you to close your eyes. Yeah. Now, as you close your eyes, I want you to rotate your eyeballs up and down and side to side. Take a deep breath and release. Now think about how you will incorporate some of these activities in your life. How will you ensure that you are moving around a bit now that you know how important it is for both your physical and mental health? Think about the activity which you could connect to throughout the webinar. Do you have any activity in mind which you could do, which is something not presented today? Just reflect upon that for a moment. Take a deep breath again. Now warm your hands and place it over your eyes. Great. So now that we had a good break, right? Um, what I did this reflection activity is because I want to leave you guys from the webinar with a goal in mind. Of movement based goal in your mind with you. So let me help you create a smart goal for yourself. Okay. So what is SMART? SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So what you're going to do right now is to decide what kind of activity would you be willing to engage in. Okay. Take a moment to think about what is that specific activity that you want to do? What is that specific form of physical activity that you can easily incorporate in your life? Is it moving? Is it walking? Or is it taking timely breaks? Now think about, is your, the activity that you decided measurable? How would you track your progress about it? How would you measure that you have been able to stick to your goals? Would you be using a Fitbit to track your progress or your phone? Or would you be like seeing, uh, calculating on a daily basis from a journal, like, okay, I walk this much, I engage in this much activity. Just think about it. You, your activity should be measurable. Attainable. How attainable is the activity that you've chosen? Would you, how would you know that you've accomplished the goal? Is it something that you can do right now during this Scenario, do you have enough equipment, for example, a yoga mat, or you have, if you have decided to work out, do you have enough equipment? And if you don't, 
try thinking about the ways that you can incorporate that. And try thinking about a new set of activities that it is attainable in your narrative. Relevance. Is that goal of loss that you decided worthwhile? Would it be meeting the needs that you have? How consistent is it with your other goals? For example, my goal is about that every 30 minutes I will walk. And it's very relevant for me because it eases the stress that I have. And it also is relevant with my other goals that I have. Timely. It's very, it's very smart technique to set a timeline for yourself. It helps you, you know, be very objective about it. That in this day, I need to have at least two hours of physical activity, no matter whichever form that you choose. Whether you measure it by day or do you want to measure it by month? That in the month, at least I should have around like five to six hours of, you know, physical activity on a daily basis. Or in a month, I want like at least like three weeks of my time is completely spent on some kind of physical activity. Think about that. When you have a very when you have set a smart goal for yourself, it makes it much more easier for you to like attain and stick to your goals. And whenever you feel you're digressing from it, come back and see what you can modify the goals that you have set for yourself. Great. So now I see that there are a lot of questions. So let's have some Q&A around. If you have any questions for me regarding this or any other questions that you would like to ask, you can go to the Q&A panel and you can enter any questions. Dear participants, if you have anything to say or if you have any questions to ask Ishita, kindly come on the chat box and type your questions and queries. You could also use the Q&A window. If you wish to talk to her, then you can raise your hand and we will let you speak. Right. So one of the questions is, um, what suggestion do you have for a good mental wellness during the time of pandemic? Very interesting question. And um, we see that uh, this is a question that, you know, everyone has been asking because mental health has gotten impacted so much during this pandemic. One of the ways, like I said today, was to engage in some kind of movement. Movement will be very good for you because um, so there's a sudden lockdown. We know that we don't have exposure to outside. Movement gives your body enough uh, flexibility. The other thing that you can do to maintain a good mental health is engage in some of the hobbies that are uh, interests that you have. For example, if you are into any artwork, channelize some of your stress and... Um, am I audible? Great. So one thing that you can do, like I was mentioning earlier, is that engage in some form of art. Art is a very good way for us to like, you know, um, work upon issues and we can also uh, you can continue Ishita all right all right um, the other ways that you can have a good mental health during the time of pandemic is always social support talk to people and I know that we are very uh, we all feel very left out these days so one more thing that you can do is connect with other individuals and talk to them right? okay so I see that there is one more question to ask what is the most ideal way to approach a mental health professional during pandemic times a very interesting question and I'm sure that a lot of people who are trying to reach a mental health professional are most often like, you know, don't know how to like do it. So one of the ways that you can do um, is drop, see what guidelines they have mentioned on their profiles or in the page. But did you have to, how do you have to take an appointment? Is it through a mail or should you drop a text before? Also try to understand that mental health professional at uh, these times are a little bit, um, have a lot of work 
So you might take a little bit time for them to reply back. So don't worry about that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is obviously, like, like I mentioned before, just drop them, take, give it your inquiry and ask what, uh, about their fees. You can ask about what uh, issues that they deal with, what, comfort, uh, what are uh, cases or what are they comfortable using. Are they a uh, stress-based counsel, mental health professional, or are they other mental health professionals who deal with trauma? So you need to find a good fit and having a conversation with them and scheduling a small consultation call will also help you figure out. Right. Thank you, Shita. Uh, another question I have is uh, about initiating movement in children. Children usually engage in outdoor activity um if it was fine uh, if, if the situation wasn't this bad then they would be going to school so um major, major part of their uh, you know share a uh, day um, used to be uh, engaged in a school with a lot of movement and activity now that they are restricted to home um as a parent i also feel like uh, my child has forgotten uh, a lot of uh, you know movements what he is mostly doing is coming into the kitchen uh, doing some pouring activity um, all those are maybe the fine motor skills as we call in psychology but when it looks um, when you look at the larger picture of physical activity in particular um, parents are finding it very difficult to engage children mostly because as you said there are household chores and then there's um, uh, you know, a particular work from home setting for the parents as well. So what do you recommend as a psychologist to all the parents? Right. It's a very interesting question, Akhila. And yes, children have been impacted and even parents have been burdened because now they don't only have like their office work to finish. They also have to handle, um, you know, their children and their children are not having enough um, movements like you were saying, right? So the physical activity for ch uh, children and kids have also been impacted. Uh, one thing that I can really recommend that I usually talk to parents about is to engage in some kind of activity like I was mentioning even earlier. Like have some family time for, your, uh, for yourself and for kids. Sundays are the time where, you know, the work is a little bit less. You don't have much of call schedule, right? So it's very important that ev after every few hours that you interact with your kid. Um, like you said, like your kid helps you in like, you know, in the kitchen, helps in the pouring and everything. What you can do is like make a child aware about how much physical activity the child can engage in, whether they can be with toys or whether they can engage in some form of yoga, take an online class or just watch online dance videos and just like get in, on, in front of the screen and just practice dancing, right? Um, if you want, don't want your kids to get exposed too much to the screen, which is a concern for a lot of um, yes, parents. Yes. What you can do that's the biggest concern. Right. Then you can just play some music on your phone or on the speaker, right? And shut the screen out and just dance. There's no harm in dancing. And that will like create such a great bond with you and your kids, right? Yeah. And one more thing it does, it also makes you a better role model. The kid tends to imitate what you are saying. So if you also engage in physical activity, your kids will start imitating you for that too. So they will also start engaging. And if they see you dance, they will also have a confidence boost that, oh my God, my parents are dancing, even I want to do dance with them. So that's a very fun way to like, you know, engage your kids a lot. Right. So can we go to the next question on Q&A? Yes. All right. So it's about um, your... Uh, insights somebody wants to know your insights about uh, connecting with nature for mental well-being right what's your take on that so um i think that connecting with nature boosts our mental wellness so much and uh, if you like look whenever you are back in an environment whether you're taking any trips and you are like towards uh, closer to nature you will immensely like you know you'll have fresh air and you suddenly feel happy that's the impact that nature has on us right and being close to um, nature related activity really boosts the activities um, so 
one way you can connect with nature to boost your mental wellness is not only gardening it's also like you exposing yourself to like parks you can go on trips right now you cannot go on trips i understand uh what you can do is like um am i audible akila yes yes you are yes all right so in space of gardening at the moment since we are very restricted and we cannot move out forward if you're staying in an apartment or if you have a little bit of garden by yourself you can move out you can go to the terrace breathe in some fresh air uh, do some bird watching in the evening or in the morning even from your balcony or from the window right just put your head out a little bit and uh, have some sunlight in a sunlight for yourself and the best way is to like you know grow some plants in your home all right next question is about it's not really a question but uh, can you suggest any book on mental wellness uh, there are a lot of books Is it a on self help book all right so there are a lot of self help books on mental wellness uh you can start with the power of now the power of subconscious mind um that will be a good understanding about your body your mind and how it works the power of now helps you focus more on the present how you can use stay in the here and now and how every activity that you do is right back to if you just do it uh ishita would you mind typing it out on the chat box so yes. that other participants can also uh, take a look at it sure there are many other mental health books you can uh, probably just google it uh, i don't have anything right from my don't seem to recall a lot uh, what you can do is probably like connect to my instagram page where you will find a little bit more book suggestions um ishita your response isn't visible um it's just fine type it on the chat box and address it to all the participants panelists and participants just give me a second sure sure in the meantime do we have any other question from the participants um would any of you like to express uh, how you're feeling after the activity that we've done we have done two activities till now in the session one uh, at the beginning and the second one towards the end the second one was uh, was the um reflection activity with a little bit of eye movement i think uh, mariam wants to talk all right uh i will allow her to talk sure hello mariam hi mariam uh, hello akila hope you're hi, doing Shita. good hi yes i'm doing good thank you yeah Yes, uh, I just want to mention after Ishita mentioned about the activities, I kind of realized that yeah, it has become a very sedentary life during the mm. lockdown, and I have been sitting for the longest. Mm. So when she mentioned about moving our hands and all, I actually realized that my muscles are tensed up. So yeah, that is very insightful, and I thank you for conducting this lecture. So yes, thank you so much, Mariam. It's very great to hear that this webinar has been. very helpful for you uh ishita yes one of uh, um i think renuka ma'am wants to know uh, the author of uh, the book would you be able to share it with her yes Okay. 
Is it visible now? Not yet. Yes, it's visible now. Okay. Thanks. I think I wrote the conscious spelling wrong. I'm so sorry about that. That's, that's okay. Dear participants, do we have any other questions from you? Uh, the power of now is by. Are there any more questions? Pardon? I think uh, there's one more person. Mr. Prakash wants to talk. I will allow him to talk. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, it's sir, really please go ahead. To, really, really pleasureful to have this program and then uh, hearing to madam. Thank you. And uh, Thank you so what would uh, just like to have one uh, insight into it is to, and whatever is has been addressed uh, is uh, basically to all general people mm -hmm. and kids, but uh, you can uh, give some hints or uh, guidance to the senior oh. citizen people who are at the home. How do they really have proper... Uh, uh, wellness with the, this thing, uh, what that they should do. Apart from what we have already told, what other things that they can do? Because the senior citizens will have their own uh, uh, problems and own, own uh, issues. So how do you address some of those things? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing that, Prakash. Um, and I see, I completely understand that senior citizens who are at home, they are not being able to move out a lot. Uh, some of them earlier used to, like, you know, go for walks in the park, and now that has been restricted. Uh, one thing, um, if like senior citizens, uh, what they usually encounter is that they have a lot of pain in their joint areas. Right, because as we age, you know, the joints become weaker, the muscles and uh, bone health deteriorates a bit. So it's very important to keep our joints moving. So basically, exercise like you know, stretching your arms forwards, backwards, having your neck rotation. So moving all your joints, sitting and standing continuously, um, if they are able to. And um, it's also good to ensure that they are not uh, exerting a lot of pressure and they're doing it very gently. So like any walking, when you're sitting down, getting up, if they can sit on the floor, try sitting on the floor and then getting back up because that way you're, you know, you're moving entire body down. The other things that senior citizen can really do is to play with, uh, you know, children around. Uh, children are like, you know, constantly on the move and like, you know, even like running behind them or just monitoring them will give you enough physical movements. And if you don't have children around, um, I would say like, you know, go for a very slow walk and just sway your body a little bit. Try putting on some music and just fall, go to the flow with the music and then that moment, you know, you can just let loose and just like move a little bit. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Prakash. Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other questions? Ishita, I think uh, that's about it. Yeah. So thank you so much for everyone for being logging into this webinar. And it was great uh, being part of this webinar and hosting with you. I'm so uh, sorry, Ishita, there's a last question. Uh, what is the impact of what? Renuka, ma'am, uh, I will allow you to speak. Please. Uh, Ask uh, Ishita about uh, your doubt, Renuka, ma'am.
रेणुका मैम यू कैन अनम्यूट एंड स्पीक Okay, her question is about what is the impact of TV serials on women, the soap operas. Okay, so um, there are a lot of impact of TV serials on not only uh, women but on lot of us. Uh, but one thing that I uh, constantly am seeing and I see that a lot of uh, people have been also complaining is about how stereotypes uh, some of the TV serials are. right and that probably ingrains us to follow those stereotypes too so right. i that can be one of the impact that tv serials have because they you know they just uh, tv series are mostly engaged like you know to bring all the population together and you know just make content which can you know cater to everyone but in a way they also some of them you know cater to all the stereotypes and you know put the women in that uh, like in the position where they're not able to do much so that can be one of the impact uh why some people uh, watch uh, tv series and they really feel distressed after that because after a very hectic day just watching something for like fun and just changing your mind that can also be a very good distressful activity for some people is stressing activity for some so it's really a mix of both a uh, good and bad side it's not like just uh, a negative impact there are some people who find a lot of you know hope when they watch tv serials when a new idea is brought about or when the idea or some tv series is actually helping people to explore more about themselves it enhances some uh, some of uh, people's you know self esteem like oh i can also do that so it's usually i think a mix of that answer is there anything That's, that you like and if i also may add to what you said then uh, watching tv serials or uh, shows on netflix or amazon prime means that um people are hooked on to their seats so there's quite lack of a movement and mostly the younger generation also um tends to binge eat while watching the show so i think uh, it's adding to a lot of uh, disadvantage that way uh, than on to the advantage that is completely true akila and i think most of us are guilty of doing that um and if you are one person who like you know binge watches a series and uh, watches shows that are like more than like for a uh, half an hour long what you can do is like put a pause a bit just take a quick walk around the room and then come back and sit or if you're just sitting just keep moving your hands or your legs you know just rotate your ankles if you if it's very important for you to just completely watch it but have some kind of movement even when you're sitting down just don't be static right that's true for your participants with this we come to the end of uh, our third session on the wellness uh, series thanks a lot ishita thank you akila for having me here uh dear participants i would like to take your attention to what we have been doing uh, as part of dr shampur madhusudana trust um recently we have um, uh, distributed ration kits to um few of the rural populations who were in need of the ration uh, during the pandemic this is one of the uh, philanthropic activities we have in, engaged in um this is also to bring to your notice that the founder of our trust uh, mrs gilja madhusudana who's uh, the wife of late dr shampur madhusudana uh, has received an award um, as women in social awareness um, recently which was held in mumbai um, i would like to congratulate you ma'am on uh, behalf of all the trust members and the volunteers uh, for receiving this award um hearty congratulations to you and i think this is going to be a motivation for you to continue um you know doing more of social service uh, on behalf uh, from the trust um so dear participants i would also like to bring to your notice about our next session which is going to be 
on the 26th of August, uh, a Wednesday again, a fortnight from today. Um, it is going to be about self-care during the pandemic by another counseling psychologist, Siddhika. Um, I would request all of you to register uh, well in advance to this session and I'm sure it is going to be a great one. Um, Siddhika has been um, working mostly with adults and also with adolescents and she's been doing some commendable job as a counselor. Um, I would request you all to register for the session and uh, kindly attend. Um, if you would like to um, get uh, information about the webinar uh, links and the sessions that we organize as part of our trust, kindly join this WhatsApp group so that you will get all the information well in advance and it will help you register and also pass it on to your friends and family members through WhatsApp. Um, I would again like to thank all of you for grazing into this occasion, uh, being such wonderful participants. I would also like to extend um, my gratitude on behalf of the trust to Ishita for agreeing um, and doing the session for us despite uh, her busy schedule. Thanks a lot, Ishita. I hope to see you all again um, a fortnight later during our next session. Until then, thank you. Uh, good night. Stay safe. And uh, please try to practice whatever you've learned today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Asana. Good night, everyone.